Welcome to the final chunk. Uh, so what we want to do here is just write some example code, get some more practice writing code. Uh, our goal is to control the frequency of the buzzer, so like the pitch, uh, using the joystick. So we use the joystick high and low to turn it on and off, and then we use left and right to control what pitch it should be doing. We're also going to get you some more practice with writing functions, just because I don't think we've been giving you enough practice with functions. So what we want to do uh, to start things off is I want you to create two functions. Uh, call one start buzzer. Um, it's going to receive nothing and return nothing. And call the other stop buzzer. Um, each of these is going to be very, very easy to implement. They're going to be one line long. So it is silly to have these functions because their implementation is so simple. But I want you to practice with functions, right? Um, and it's a good practice for, for exams as well. When I want you to call these functions is I want you to do an ADC comparison. You've already got in your, your code from last time, you've got that vertical joystick. If the vertical joystick is above 600, I want you to call start. Um, and if it's below 600, I want you to call stop. Um, and so you should be able to turn the buzzer on and off uh, by turning the joystick up and down. Since it's 600, if it's in the middle, it'll be off. You don't have to push it above that to turn it on. See if you can do it on your own. All right, so I'm obviously going to do it with you. So let's go ahead and open up uh, our project that we've been working on here. The first thing I do when I want to make a, uh, a new function is I create a prototype. So I'm going to create a prototype for start buzzer. And I'm also going to make a prototype for stop buzzer. And while I'm up in this top area of my project, I'm going to go ahead and make that threshold pound define. So I'm going to say pound define, and this is just because you really shouldn't have um, you know, magic numbers down in your code. Admittedly, there's already a lot of magic numbers down in our code, and you know, we could fix those too. So we could say, you know, um, middle A, turns out he's 141, right? So let's go use some of these things. So my middle A, I just kind of added that. Uh, just so I wouldn't have to write this uh, this 141 here. And so what I want to do is I want to, um, I'll just leave this, it'll buzz for two seconds at the start, that'll be fine. Um, I want to do a comparison. So I'm going to say if my vertical joystick is greater than ADC threshold, um, then what I want to do is I want to call uh, start buzzer. Um, and then if it's not, so it must be lower, right? Um, then what I want to do is I want to call stop buzzer. So that's all I wanted to do. Uh, so when I push it, push it up, starts, push it down, stops. Uh, the only thing I've got to do is I've got to write these two functions. So to write these guys, so start buzzer, uh, what he's going to do is he's going to uh, simply call set um, I think it's DCPWM1, uh, start, I want to turn the volume on. Uh, so for my volume on, I typically use uh, 10%, uh, which I said earlier, but I didn't type. Um, and I suppose that if I wanted to be a good programmer, uh, I should go make a pound to find for that. So I'll go fix that in a little bit. And then stop buzzer, um, set DCPWM1, uh, to, I'll tell you what, I'll just say piezo off. So I've got to go make a pound to find for that guy. Um, and piezo on. Uh, and that'll hopefully make my code easier to read as well. So I've got a couple more pound to finds. Trying to be a good programmer. Trying to avoid magic numbers. Uh, piezo on is I'm going to set it to 10%, which is 102. As you may have recalled from the previous example, it could be about anywhere, right? So right in the middle would work as well. Uh, but my goal here is just to get this thing on and off uh, with the vertical joystick. This is the easy part. The harder part will be changing the frequency with the horizontal. Uh, so I've got this guy, and you can see that when I push up, he beeps. When I let go or push down, he's off. So far, so good. Uh, but his pitch is always the same, even if I go back and forth. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our slides and see what the next challenge is. 
Hopefully you're able to do that without uh, following me along. Maybe the 10% gotcha. But hopefully you're able to get fairly, fairly far. The next thing I want to do is this. I want to change my start buzzer to where it receives a potentiometer value. Let's go ahead and do that one together. That's easy, right? Um, so instead of receiving void, uh, I would like for you to receive an integer, uh, which I just called pot value, right? Or potentiometer value would have been a better term. So he's going to now receive a potentiometer value, uh, which means that in here we better send him something. Um, I'm just going to tell you I'm going to send him the horizontal joystick. Um, and then in here I'm going to have to read it, uh, read the ADC. Uh, being a quite lazy person, I'm going to copy paste what was up here and then do an old shift F. The horizontal is on channel two. Um, I happen to have that memorized because I know that the, the two knobs like that you have to use a filter screen for, they're zero and one. Um, so then two and three are the joystick. Uh, so I just had that memorized. All right, so I can pass that over. Um, so I'm reading the, uh, oops, reading the horizontal joystick typo there. Um, so reading the horizontal joystick and then I'm passing that into the function. Obviously I could have done that inside the function but I wanted to practice passing things to functions. And then our to do in here is to do um, use the pot value, the potentiometer value uh, to set uh, the piezo frequency. All right, so that's your job. So you're gonna obviously call uh, open PWM1, which it's a shame that you have to call a function called open to change the frequency, but that's just how it works. Um, and you're gonna try to set a reasonable uh, timer tick here. Let's go give you some more information about what I want you to do. All right, so the way that I want you to do these is I want you to um, call open uh, PWM with a value of 70 um, if the ADC, it says frequency there, but really you should say what you're opening with. Open it with a value of 70, uh, which corresponds to some frequency, right? Um, and then I want you to open it with, uh, with 254. I don't know why I chose 254. I could have chosen 255. Um, but do an open PWM um, of 254 if you see a potentiometer value of 1023. So I've kind of done the hard part for you, right? I've, I've told you um, the actual timer tick value you're gonna use. Um, and so what you need to do is you need to make some formula. It's not a hard formula, right? So it's like, you know, timer ticks, um, it's equal to um, rise over run, right? So you've got a, a change in X over change in Y plus 70. Um, so it's the ADC value over the range that needs to go. If it needs to go up a total range um, of this much, so it's like, um, I don't know, 254 minus 70 uh, divided by 1023. Um, so that times uh, the ADC uh, should get the job done, right? Um, so see if that makes sense to you and see if you can write it in code and implement it. I will give you a big warning that you need to be very careful about integer math. All right, take a minute and see if you can do it and see if you can worry about integer math as appropriate. All right, so I'm gonna solve it as well. Uh, so I've kind of got my basic formula here and I gave you some places to where, you know, you could, you could fill out something like this, right, if you wanted, uh, but I've got it on the next slide. So the first thing that I might try is this, right? So I've got my potentiometer value divided by 1023, uh, multiply by the range I need, then add my bias, which is 70. Easily can convert that to C code uh, just like this. I could type that in. Um, let's think about what happens though, right? So a potentiometer value, let's say the value is 512, uh, which should be right in the middle of your range. 512 divided by 1023, integer math, uh, that is zero, right? Zero times any number is still zero. Um, so turns out, if you did write this, you would always get 70. 
except for 1023, which would really give you the max number. Um, so the reason this fails miserably is because this is a terrible implementation of integer math and thinking ahead to what integer math is going to do to you. There are a lot of ways to fix it. Um, so this one definitely, definitely fails, right? Just a disaster. The number one way to fix it is to do your multiplication first. Um, so if you do your multiplication first, um, the first thing that you would think to do is, you know, let's just swap it, right? So let's just say our potentiometer value uh, times, and I would just do the math on this, right? There's no reason to keep giving it a subtraction problem, right? So 184 um, divided by 1023 plus 70. That's what I would have done second, right? Um, now you've got to worry, does this get too big? Um, pot value can ba go basically to 1,000. Uh, so that means that the number could get that big, um, which you may remember is too big because you, you shouldn't go above 32,000. So that's actually too big. Um, so the easiest thing to do is to just reduce this fraction. Um, there's a lot of ways to reduce fractions. My favorite way to reduce it is just to call it 18 over 102, right? Done, divide by 10 on each side. By doing that, uh, the highest I could get to um, is now 18,000, which is good, right? So the implementation that I am gonna choose to use is right here. So I'm just gonna take my potentiometer value, I'm gonna multiply it by 18, which I know the biggest that can get is 18,000, which is still safe. Then I'm gonna divide by 102, then I'm gonna add 70. That's the thing I'm gonna do. Just to mention some other solutions here, you could typecast it to a long first, and then you don't have to worry about going over 32,000. Another thing you could do, this is horribly inefficient, is you could do everything with floats, do all your math with floats, uh, and then when you're done, typecast it to an int. We kind of talked about these things, you know, many, many video lectures ago. Um, so now you can kind of see one implementation for why it actually matters. So I'm gonna implement this one right here. So 18 divided by 102 plus 70. So I'm gonna take my potentiometer value um, and I'm gonna say uh, divided by 18 times, oops, times 118, times 18 divided by 102 uh, plus 70. You could do this on multiple lines if you wanted, uh, but I'm just gonna stick it all in here because I've already thought through the problem. And so now, uh, hopefully what I can do is I can turn on my buzzer uh, by pressing it high and I can change the frequency. Sounds kind of like a theremin. Um, so really what this is an example of, is it's just an example of frequency uh, changes uh, with the piezo buzzer and doing something with the ADC just so we could hear a difference. All right, that's all you really need to know about the PWM. It's actually quite easy. Frequency, duty cycle, couple library functions, Bam, you know everything you need to know. See you tomorrow night. All right, bye.